pink ribbon on. I got a pink ribbon on. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, good morning Ava. Say good morning to the world, Ava. Hi. Good morning, everybody. See, we got a pink ribbon on this morning. Okay. Well, today is April 4th already. It's Thursday. And the gospel for today comes from St. John still. We're continuing readings from St. John, chapter 5, verses 34 to 47. This is a long gospel. And um, again, it's one of those uh, gospels from St. John that is very rich with meaning. It's just so, um, so intense. The language of St. John is really... Um, packed with, uh, with uh, uh, symbols and with, with, uh, with meaning. Okay, anyway, uh, we're going to comment on the last part of this uh, reading, which I think will be uh, most beneficial for us this morning. Where our Lord says this, Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who will accuse you is Moses in whom you have placed your hope for if you had believed Moses you would have believed me because he wrote about me but if you do not believe his writings how will you believe my words so what does this mean our Lord is reminding the Jews at that time okay that well you know uh, you had believed Moses right Moses was was the uh, the lawgiver he was the one who um, is attributed to be the author of the first five books of the Old Testament what do we call the first five books Pentateuch, Pentateuch right the Pentateuch okay <laughs> Or, or the Torah. See, the Jews up to now uh, call it the Torah. The Torah means, in Hebrew, it means uh, the law. It means the book, books of the law. Okay? Pentateuch is a Greek, is a Greek term, which means, uh, which means five. So the first five books of the Old Testament were uh, written, apparently written by Moses. Okay? Uh, there's still a little bit of uncertainty as to whether Moses really wrote those five books, but uh, those five books actually um, well uh, follow the the life of uh, Moses. It's actually like a biography, if not an autobiography, of Moses. Let me see. Let's review. What are those five books? What's the first book of uh, of the Old Testament of the Bible? What is the first book? Genesis, Genesis, right? Genesis is the first book, Joseph. Genesis, and Genesis means what? Beginning, exactly, right? Genesis means beginning. And then the next book is what? So Genesis narrates the story all the way from the very beginning, which is creation, right? All the way from creation to the birth of Moses, actually. So when Moses was born, the first years of the Jewish people. And then comes the? Exodus. Exodus. And the Exodus is what? <laughs> huh? Well, the story about when the Jewish people, the chosen people, huh? Free. When they exited. Exodus means uh, to leave, right? When they left Egypt. So the story of... Uh, um, exiting Egypt and then is followed by Leviticus Leviticus comes from huh what <laughs> the Levites right the priests okay so the priestly people and then that's followed by numbers mm -hmm. numbers and then lastly Deuteronomy okay Deuteronomy was was the part of the uh, the last of the five books where it narrates how Moses actually uh, was talking about the promised land, but 
and then and then he was there and in in uh, he could not enter the promised land because that was part of what uh, uh, the the deal with with God right that he was going to lead the people out of Egypt but you know uh, uh, well there was something about Moses there that uh, God um, God thought okay I'm not going to give you the same reward <laughs> Uh, of entering the promised land with the people you brought out of Egypt. Okay? So he was there looking at the promised land. Okay? And then uh, and, uh, and that was where he died already. So those are the five books of the Old Testament. Now, uh, whether Moses actually wrote them is uh, still uncertain. But uh, yeah, but um, uh, it's largely attributed to Moses. Now, our Lord said here, for if you had believed Moses, since Moses was was the was the bedrock uh, foundation of of their faith, right? The things that jo uh, Moses had uh, had written about and had revealed to them. Yeah, yeah. are we hungry? <laughs> which include, by the way, uh, which include, by the way, the Ten Commandments. See, the Ten Commandments. Uh, remember that story in Mount Sinai, right? Okay, you go to mommy first. Okay. The story in Mount Sinai where God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses, right? That's why Moses was called the lawgiver. So he was the one who gave the Ten Commandments to the Jewish people. So our Lord said, if you believe Moses, then you will believe me. So if you're not believing me, since Moses spoke about me and all the prophets spoke about me, meaning Jesus, if you don't believe me, then... Your faith in Moses was really nothing. It means you really didn't believe Moses. It means you really did not, you were not really living up to, to what you call faith. Okay? Because Moses spoke about me. Moses gave you the law that will, that will connect you to me. But if you're not believing me, then that means you didn't believe Moses either. And therefore your faith is really in vain. Okay? So our Lord here is trying to tell us that, well, you know, gi giving emphasis to uh, believing in the things that Moses has written about. Um, what does this, what does this, uh, um, what practical re uh, resolutions can we draw for ourselves uh, in terms of this particular gospel reading today? I think one uh, good lesson that we could gather from this is the importance of precisely reading and studying scripture okay our lord recommends it here okay? our lord says uh, uh, moses wrote about me so you have to read and believe moses you have to read and believe what moses had written about me okay so moses wrote about me so our lord wants to encourage us here to study and believe the scriptures for practical purposes this is what we do every day every morning here we are reading the scripture and studying the scripture and understanding what it means for us this is what all the gospel commentaries of every day is all about right so we are living up to what jesus wants us to do which is to study Moses to study the scripture of course most of the time what we're doing here is studying the New Testament right the life of Jesus and after okay but that does not stop us from reading the Old Testament because we could understand the New Testament a little better if we're also acquainted with the Old Testament okay so I cannot uh, even tell you how many times I've made that whole round of reading the entire Bible from cover to cover. I've done that several times already in my lifetime. Okay? So it's something that I would encourage you to do also. Okay? It's a very good habit, in fact, for everybody. A good habit to set aside a few minutes every day to try to read the Scripture from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Maybe you give a little bit more time to the New Testament because that's what's going to be more relevant to us now. Okay? But it doesn't mean to say we should skip the Old Testament. We could also try to learn the Old Testament 
little by little, little by little. And that's going to help us to have a good idea of why the New Testament is the way it is. Okay? So, for practical uh, takeaways uh, for this gospel uh, reading today, I would recommend that, that we take a very keen interest in studying uh, Scripture. Okay? That is why these gospel commentaries we do in the morning don't take these things lightly. These are all very important. These are all very important for us to, to understand to understand our, uh, our uh, Christian life okay? and our faith in our Lord and how we can make it, how we can apply Scripture in practical terms in our daily lives. Okay? This is the, the importance of these uh, commentaries that we're doing. Now, so the other practical thing that I would recommend everybody to do, and this I'd recommend to everybody, okay, is, you know, at Mass, at Mass, we have a very good um, program where the daily Masses we go to gives us bits and pieces of Scripture from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Okay? So let us pay very close attention to those readings at Mass. Let us always pay clear, uh, 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 keen attention to the readings at Mass. And the, what is going to help us pay attention to the readings at Mass? Any suggestion? Use the missile. Of course, use the missile. That's a reason why each and every one of you got a missile. Okay? Right? So let us use our missiles. Let us not skip. Let us not skip that out of laziness. And in fact, the more you use the missile every day for Mass read in the readings, the more good example you're giving everybody, right? And hopefully the others will get encouraged to also buy their old missiles and use their missiles to go to Mass. Okay? Because that is going to help you. You see, it's, it's, it's very different if you're just standing there at Mass and just hearing uh, what's being read at Mass. That's, that's very different. Your attention is not full. Your focus is not full. But if you're reading the same text that you're hearing being read from the pulpit, it gives a different effect. Okay? It helps you to really discern every word that's being said there. It really helps you to take in whatever is being said in the scriptural readings. And that way, you benefit more from going to Mass. Okay? So folks, I'd recommend the same thing to all of you uh, listening this morning. You know, it's, it's, it's not expensive to buy a missile, really, and it's, it's something that I think you should invest in if you're really interested in, uh, in um, making full use of the Mass that you attend, whether it be just Sunday Mass or weekday Masses. It is something I would really, really recommend uh, to everybody. Uh, buy yourselves a missile. Invest in a missile. If you really want to invest in your own spiritual lives, invest in a missile. And that's going to help you not only follow the readings of the Mass, but you can even use it for Gospel reading outside of Mass. If you just want to follow uh, or have a, have a way to read Scripture on a daily basis, you can even use your missile to do that. Okay. Any questions? None? Very good. Okay, that'll be for. That's it for us, folks. This morning, have a good day, everybody. Oh, today, uh, by the way, those of you living in Modesto, this is a reminder. If you happen to be on this call, Bishop Myron Cotta, our own uh, bishop of the Stockton Diocese, is going to be praying at the abortion clinic today. I think uh, it's going to be at ten o'clock. So. If you'd be interested to pray with the bishop to end abortion, then be at the abortion clinic at 2030 Coffee Road this morning. We, uh, uh, today, we're, my, our children are going to have several appointments that are pretty early. So uh, we will try and see if we can uh, stick around. We would go there for uh, rosary, but we are not certain we can stick around to wait for the bishop. So if you don't find us there, that only means we were done doing our rosary and we had to go uh, in order to uh, go to the appointments because it's pretty late. He's, he's going to be there by 10 o'clock. So 
We'll see what we can do about it. But anyway, have a good day, everybody. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye.